Good evening. It's an honor for me to be here tonight on behalf of a pioneering director, Usain Pulsi. Usain has had a fascinating life. Then again, most legends do. But tonight, I want to focus on her work. For it is through her work that she has made her mark, speaking truth to power, pulling back the curtain on things that were hidden from, for so many, sharing with a global audience stories that needed to be told. And I'll try to limit my use of the word first in telling her story. Although given her career, it's almost impossible. Her breakthrough film was Sugar Cane Alley. <laughs> Next year is its 40th anniversary and its story is just as compelling today as it was back then. Set in her homeland in the 1930s in an era where the natives of Martinique worked in the sugarcane fields, we see through the eyes of its protagonist, Jose, the incredibly harsh life his people led under the French colonial rule. To me, in addition to being visually stunning, the film endures because its story allows us to see both the heartbreak and hope of that world. Sugarcane Alley won the Silver Lion at the 1983 Venice Film Festival and a Caesar Award for Best First Work. First. <laughs> The first Caesar won by a woman director and by a black filmmaker. All great directors have a signature film. For Usain, it is a dry white season. This drama made at the height of apartheid tells the story of a South African suburbanite who agrees to help his black gardener find his jailed son. Along the way, his investigation opens his eyes to the horrors committed by the secret police. But more important, seeing that film open the eyes of so many to the horrors of that time in history. The film premiered in 1989, but its urgency back then makes it just as relevant in the world of today as it did back then. A quick side story. After learning of Usain's commitment to her story and to social change, Marlon Brando decided to return to the screen after a nine-year absence, and even more amazing, Brando was so moved by Usain's passion that he agreed to work for Union Scale. Remember, this is the same Marlon Brando who demanded a huge fee for a few minutes screen time for Superman. If that's not proof of Usain's talent and relentless dedication to her work, nothing is. With these films, and all her other work, Usain has been an inspiration to me, to filmmakers, to contemporary artists, to novelists across the globe. And if I were to be bold to say, Usain, everybody has a different process. They really do. But we all have the same goal. And as a black woman artist, I feel like I'm always defending my womanhood and blackness. I am always going out in the world searching for that work that's going to catapult me, blow up in the world, and have it mean something to somebody. You said, I ain't going to do that. I'm going to wait for the work that is worthy of me. You did not defend your blackness. You did not defend your womanhood. You used it as warrior fuel. And then my big question, which is rhetorical, is why are we artists? We want to create things that move people, make them tremble, 
change them, shift them, make them feel less alone. Is that it? I think a better question is, what do we live for? Right? And it's like the old Cherokee birth blessing that says, may I live long enough to know why I was born. You epitomize the Emile Zola quote as, I'll tell you what I came here to do. I, an artist, came here to live out loud. Hussein once said that some people make movies for money or glory and will take any subject people offer them, but I cannot do that. I need to feel the story and make it mine. And in her groundbreaking career, she has done just that. Let's take a look at some of the brilliant work of Hussein Palsy.